Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more Hard Space Shipbreaker. It is pretty cool to be back in the saddle. All right, let's see. This bloody hab. Um. Again, the, the, the history lesson is that before they implemented this hab, they just had a rudimentary menu system. And a lot of people, myself included, to be honest, um, preferred it that way. It was tighter, it was cleaner. This is essentially added extra crap in the middle, right? And, um, I think some people get a little bit hung up on work product for the sake of work product. Links tokens. Tier requirement not met. Do I already have that? I have that? Well, hang on. Oh no, they're the same color. I was like, why are they different colors? It's because I was lighting it up or something. Um, just because you do something doesn't necessarily mean it holds inherent value, right? There's such a, there, there are failed escapades. And I think some people have a, a difficult time getting their head around that. I think I just need more levels by the look of it. Okay, I'm rank three. Let's just go back into the yard and, and keep chipping away. Um, yeah, and so a lot of, a lot of that I see as... I can appreciate even the story, right, which I don't rate. I appreciate a lot of hard work went into it. And I think the knee jerk for people trying to defend it or what have you is that, you know, you're being rude for taking something that someone put a lot of work into and then saying it's a it's a value negative. It actually reduces the previous value. But that's harsh truths. This shit like this happens all the time, every day. So, you know, while the story is, let's say, subjective, some like it, some don't, that's fine, okay? We, we can leave it there. But stuff like the Hab's a little bit of a better example of, it is essentially just a menu system, a UI element. You're not really doing anything in the Hab other than navigating around a, a rendered environment in 3D, but it is, it is ultimately a middle menu. Right? It's a Tarkov inventory. It's it's something that's got nothing to do with the main gameplay loop. And so the 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 more uh, functional how do how do I put it actually? I, I talk about um like menus like this, like like this overlay, right? Let's just talk about this really quickly, because I think it's important. It's got all the info, how much we've destroyed and all that, but th the thing is this is still breaking the fourth wall. It's not like the video game character can see this. This is for me. The player. This is for Scarlet to look at. And it has to be functional. Now, keeping it in a color theme and text that's consistent with in-world, that's fine. But an egregious example you see a lot in indie game development that I bring up is when you have like a pixel art game and it keeps the menu in like unreadable pixel art. And to me, that is just a fucking huge misstep because what you're trying to do is take artistic license with a function of the game, which is supposed to be a fourth wall breaking um, menu, right? It's not sort of, it's not really in the game, as it were, right? The game is cutting up ships, but if I want to invert my controls, I want to do that as clearly and quickly and concisely as I possibly can. So, you know, uh, that was just an example, and there's nothing wrong with the menus in this game. But what I'm sort of saying is that the HAB, and like a Tarkov inventory system, these secondary gameplay mechanics that service the main game, but they are functionally not a gameplay mechanic in and of themselves. So, they're, they're in this weird space where they're kind of a menu, but they're trying to be something more. And then, you come back to the argument that I'm proposing, which is the HAB is a menu. It was a menu previously, and the worst thing they did was show us the players that it could be done that way. And instead now it's this rendered 3D environment that probably had a lot of man hours into you making it. And I feel like the developer feels they have to, have to ship it to justify the work, right? Um... When the truth is, the Hab's a fucking waste of time. Why are we swinging back this way? Are we attached underneath somehow? Okay. So it's bringing this chunk with it. Well, it seems like an... Nope, I gotta be careful. You can kill yourself doing that if you blast yourself back too hard. 
Anyway. But it, 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 it sort of is interesting, the, the idea around something that is a... See, it's not a value add, but it's still work product. I don't know if we can do that without tethers, but I don't really want to cut it up into smaller pieces. Now, what's the point of these here? Processor, processor, furnace. What about this? That's nothing. So this is to, to what? To get this little rack out? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, use this O2. So, I'm not really hung up on the hat, if we're being honest. I'm just sort of illustrating. Sometimes you can glean some information from it. The developers are willing to implement something that was clearly a sunk cost from the development side, so the hub required a lot of development man hours, and it was clearly someone's puppy, but no one with good project management and game direction since intervened and said, listen, this is a fucking waste of resources, it's a waste of time, and, and worse than that, it can't, it slows the player down. It's an inferior system to the previous system. And so my, my takeaway is less the HAB's inclusion as the HAB in and of itself and more as an insight to the mind of your development team, you know, who allowed something like that to happen or pushed for it even, you know? And then then you start to then you start to think about going back to the story. And like I said, the, the main thing I will only really want to focus on with the story is that it's unskippable, intentionally so. And you look at that and you're like, hmm, okay, right. So we're jamming in things like the hab, which is kind of, it's actually a net negative from a gameplay perspective. It's a pretty little box that you walk around in, but functionally it's worse than the previous option from earlier access. And so if they're going to insist on doing that, well, maybe they are in fact intentionally making it so you can't skip this story because uh, again, you just got to follow the logic because it's a perceived uh, sunk cost project. We spent X hours making this story. Those players better fucking listen to it. You know? I could be totally off base, 100%, but even, you know, say you were somehow a developer watching this, at least... I would hope you would understand my my logic and my reasoning and my explanation as to why I'm like, I don't want to call it malicious, right? Because malicious does in fact infer intentional harm. And I don't think anyone's trying to hurt anyone with this fucking story or the hab, right? But I think it's more selfish. It's self-serving. It's, it's, it's this weird mindset of the developers put in hard work and so we will bring the player to recognize and acknowledge and suffer through it. You know, and, and in that, if that is in fact the logic loop, the problem is there that if you were to put it in a hierarchy, they're kind of putting the developer at least on equal footing as the consumer, if not higher. And I'm sorry, but hard truths? Customer comes first, man. You know? It, that's, that's how it should be. And... Again, you, you go into forums on this game anywhere and you will find fucking half the comments, well, maybe not half, but like a significant amount consistently will be, when are you going to let us skip the story, right? So why on earth hasn't that been implemented? You know what I mean? It's what a significant chunk of your base wants, so implement it. And yeah, again, 
No, I was gonna say, not that I'm trying to waffle, but this is how I play Hard Space. This is how people watch me play Hard Space. I just talk about stuff that I find interesting. Um... But yeah, I think that presses my point home, is... If you're thinking about the customer first and the developer second, which is what you should be doing when you're trying to move a product that someone pays for... Um... Then, what is this? Oh, that's part of the background. Then you should be doing everything you can to give quality of life... ...to your customer. Oh, I put it in the wrong one! Hang on, can I bring it back? Oh, I'm gonna get myself killed here. Can I get caught on the edge? Just clip on this edge? Oh no, look, it's taken it away. Well, it's a bit cruel that you let me clip onto it and then... Oh well. I don't seem to have the uh, upgrades to pull myself back out of the machine. Unscheduled personal time. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Expired? You've been processed. The total value was $8. Oh, that's not bad. All right, all right. Breathe. No, I'm fine. You okay? Yeah. Got yourself good there. Don't sweat it. Happens to the best of us. Always good to review your spare replacement form. See how you can avoid future mishaps. Too many spares will rack up the debt, and that's how they get you. Okay, let's get back to work. Weaver out. As an interesting sort of aside, this Weaver bloke is, um, apparently they changed the voice actor because they had a lot of placeholder. I think because that's red, I can't move it. They had like placeholder voice actors, right? Members of the dev team or whatever. And I, I have seen a not insignificant amount of people complaining that, uh, that they changed Weaver's voice actor and they kind of liked the original one better. One, that's a pretty fucking juvenile position to hold. Like, if it's, if it's some poor cunt on the development team just reading voice lines as a placeholder and they replace it, you know, it's like, it's a bit weird for you to go, oh, I want the old one back. It's like, what? Shut up. That's strange. <laughs> Don't give the devs a hard time about that. But then two, I can't tell the difference. It's just some fucking cunt with a generic southern drawl, you know? Like, it's a weird thing to get hung up on. So yeah, I mean, the the Sheila that everyone hates because because of the story, her original voice actress was must have absolutely been a staff up, and I I don't want to dwell on it too much because it's a bit unfair to fucking kick someone that's just, you know, it's not really their job. They're just doing placeholder. So like, just to open and shut it, the the, the voice actress I suppose that had that was Lou in early access was fucking atrocious, like really bad. However. Again, I'm not going to harp the point, because the person would probably turn around and say, yeah, well, I was just doing it to help out, to fill in, you know, like... It, they probably wouldn't take offence knowing that they're not a brilliant voice actor, <laughs> because... They're, like, I, I wouldn't want to push the point and bully them or give them a hard time. Um, it's just a case of, you could absolutely tell it was just some generic staffer that, you know... Hey, you want 50 bucks to uh, voice the lines before we put them in while in early access? Okay, cool. You know, you can tell it was that sort of arrangement. Processing valuable deposit. Credits transferred. Can I do this whole thing? Apparently I can. No, I can't. It's red. Well, shit. By how much? By a lot. Yeah, I don't think I can... I don't think I can do it. That's a shame. I'm not gonna get the last tick. I mean, I suppose I could do a, a quick shift and come back out and just really... Actually, that's exactly what I should do. Because who gives a fuck about the daily debt? 
Not me. Not someone that understands math and systems. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, all this doesn't... Who gives a fuck <laughs> about credits? The only thing you can buy in this game is like oxygen tanks and repair kits and you're already in debt so you can buy them infinitely anyway. Hello Shipbreaker 9346-52 Hello Hab Voice Links would like to share the following inspirational message Oh I can wake up, Make sorry the most of your shift by fanning the tiny Yep, career progress, great flames of profitability. Yep, fees or something, yep, cool Uh, workstation. Equipment. Yeah, see all this? It, just give me a, a menu. And even then, this menu as well is fiddlier. Because I think they implemented this menu before the HAB. So the menu that predated this was even more functional. It was just straightforward, you know? Split saw license. No, no, I want... Tethers. There we go. That's what we want. We want the tethers. Yeah. See, cause like. I understand. Let's just game theory real quickly. I understand the idea of having progression, right? of uh, meeting out upgrades over the course of the play period. I can understand that from a game pers perspective, you know, design, and once you start getting used to certain mechanics, you implement more complex ones and it creates variety. I'm not at all against this, but I feel that if you are going to implement that in some sort of pseudo RPG experience-based, choice-based system, I think you've really got to put your all into it. And otherwise, just stick with linear upgrades, right? The XP bar fills up, you get the unlocks, that's it. So all of this, again, even though I'm critical of the HAB and this menu, even the, the prototype menu back in the day, why do I have all this shit, you know? Range 1, range 2, range 3, right? Like... There should be... I shouldn't have to interact with any of this in, in its current implementation. I think you could probably implement it much better and have it more sprawling and, and potentially have almost an RPG component where your ship breaker maybe levels down a certain tree and he becomes really good with tethers or another one that becomes good at nuclear material or whatever. Like, have branching, um, you know, exclusive class structure but instead they've done this so i i would say just rip the entire fucking menu out just have an xp bar that fills up after the end of the level and be and be done with it you know we're just gonna really quickly duck in and finish this shift since i've got the tethers to pull it it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce you to the rest of the crew in our sector. Lucky me. Sound off, everyone. Hey, Rook. Name's Luke. I was the worm until you showed up. So thank you. Now I get to do the hazing. What are you talking about? I just want to... We, it didn't last two seconds. As someone who's ex-military <laughs> and, and, and comes from a hazing background, which I won't talk about too much because there's a traditional component to it, right? But the thing is, like, any... I can tell you from lived experience, anyone that is happy to haze someone like that in conversation, hey, I got hazed, so I'm going to haze you. Ha ha, joke, wink. That, that, that is a piece of shit human anyway. It, it just is. That says that out loud and thinks that that's funny. And, and the funny thing is they've probably never been told or learnt how to read a Don't room. Listen to her. I'm Dee Kai! Your mic's still messed up. How about now? Better. Oh, hey. I'm I have to wonder if that Kai. dude's whole character Mike's development is that he has a broken oh, microphone. Yeah, <laughs> 
Heaven forbid they give us functional gear. I'm sure they're working on it as fast as they can. Cutter, I added you to the Sector Comms channel. It can get lonely out here. Helps to check in with each other from time to time. Maybe, I guess. I would also argue that a career like this probably uh, attracts a certain solo personality. Nice. Done. Hello, Shipbreaker 9346 Hello, robot. Oh, great, I got stickers. Lynx would like to share the following inspirational Yay. message. Some now, people dream of great salvage. Is there something I can upgrade there up as well? And make it happen. Messages and certification? Nah. That's fine. Nothing important. Uh, equipment. Again. Oh my god, I know I'm harping about it. But it shits me because the loop, the ship breaking, is what everyone's here for. It's what's fun. And it's like, just let me get back out there. Um, and what I need to do now is what? Go into this, go through that little animation, which is going to add up the thousandth time I do it. And then click on every individual thing to see if there's an upgrade. Is that, is that how this workflow is supposed to go? Repair. Right. Rank four, I guess at rank five I should check, but what you, what you really want is an exclamation system. You know, you see it in every other game on the fucking planet. It's so basic bitch game development. Get a little exclamation mark. Okay, I need an upgrade. Let me go into the menu. All right, if you really want to keep this stupid bloody menu system, put a little exclamation mark next to one of these. Oh, okay, there's a new laser cutter upgrade. Now, I'll eat my words because if that actually does exist, then, then fair enough, right? But I don't think it does. Continue ship. No, 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 we want a new one. What do we want? I mean... The value means nothing. What matters is the MP, LT. Now, what, even, what the fuck is MP and LT? What is the difference? Link's tokens, we save up to buy upgrades. MP is, uh, okay, MP is the actual ranking up experience. Oh, I see. Okay, and it's in blocks of 20 by the looks of it. So if I want to... Why are they 23? Oh. And that's less. Oh, well, let's take this one. Right? It's slightly more MP per bloody... Per chunk. You know? Why wouldn't I take that? So this is one of the newer ships. I think it might be the last one they released before they left early access. Yeah, I would I'd be really curious to be a fly on the wall or even talk to people in a non-hostile way, of course, that were involved in the development because what when it first shipped, even with a handful of ships and that, this game was so fucking exciting and popular and, and that's you know I got my popularity on YouTube through that but um I kind of feel like they came out swinging with a really cool concept it was pretty much feature complete like almost everything was already implemented and there was a couple of ships and all they really needed to do honest to god I, and again I know I'm not a developer and I have the luck of sitting up in my fucking tower with hindsight, right? So I understand that it's all good and well to talk speculatively about this, but the, the, the situation on the ground is probably very different, right? So there's your disclosure. But I can't help but think 
All they had to do was stay in early access for another six months, <laughs> or however long, but you know, a short amount of time, implement a couple more ship hulls, ship it, start working on a sequel. Like it was that, it was that feature complete from a, um, let's say, from a, a gameplay loop perspective. But then it went into early access for years. For actually years. And I really feel like maybe they were just sort of like, oh. Again, I don't want to assume malice. But but if it, if it is from a malice perspective, it feels like they were like, how do we milk this fucker for the next couple of years? And just started adding all these bullshit little mechanics that no one gives a fuck about, right? Fuel levels restored. You know, let's add a story, let's add a hab. You know, they re they added demo charges and they kind of fucked the entire inventory system. I suppose that's probably the biggest tragedy of all, is that it came out with such a strong showing. And it didn't need to be anything more, but yet it's it, it, it kind of uh, abused early access. Because I've been vocal over the years, I'm not the only one that kind of uh, has the shits with early access, right? It's, uh, it's often abused, right? And I'm not just saying the really clear-cut cases where they take the money and fucking run, but I'm also saying the ones where they ask for full price out the gate, they give you a tech demo, and then they piss fart around and take years to deliver on the product. I like to think of it from the perspective, if I was hiring for my own business, you know, you wouldn't hire any of these fucking people. They just dick drag and milk it. But at the same time, they're just playing the market, and the market has taught them that that's a system that can be rewarded, right? Personally, I'd be like, make it, package it, ship it, Start working on a sequel. And you could probably increase your, your money flow and your throughput and be generally more successful. But I find that there's this, this mediocrity built in because of the safety blanket that is early access, right? We can ship a half-baked game. Let's, let's storyboard it for a couple of months. Let's, you know, let's get the moving parts, the basics down. All right, cool. Let's put a full price price tag on it. Let's come up with a roadmap. Let's ship it as if as if we've been spending fucking five years working on this. Let's ship this after a couple of months. And um and then we'll just sort of get residuals as people slowly buy it and pay our you know, our mediocre living wage. And then we'll chip away at it slowly. Do you sort of know what I mean? Like I, I can't understand why people wouldn't just want to fucking flog the shit out of themselves to well, I guess I can understand because not everyone's the same. Look at me, I run all these different channels and I work full-time jobs on the side and that as well, on the side. But like, I like to work. Pick up? No. Fuck your bunny. Can I destroy it? Yep. Um. Anyway. Rampant speculation. But uh, I, I think the, the sort of, my net takeaway is that it really feels to me like, yeah, early access has made a lot of indie developers just comfortable and through that kind of risk averse. And in a way, they're sort of turning into the AAA companies that don't change the model, that just do the safe thing. But that's not all developers, you know? Some of them use early access appropriately. Right. Well, we're running out of here. Might as well just clock off, eh? Do that. Did, did that technically tick over? It did. I got my 43 I'm up to. Yeah. Anyway. 
So it goes. Scarlet having a fucking rant about things. Again, don't think that I'm too down on this game. It's just one of those things where you can sort of zone out and you can just talk shit. Um, oh, Hello, someone's calling me. Later. Nope, I'm good. I don't want to talk to them. Fuck them. Um, all right. Yeah, cool. So we'll finish up there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I still enjoy the loop. I wouldn't play it if I didn't. Uh, but it's cool. I, I find it interesting to talk about some of these things and like the pitfalls of early access. I, you know, that's not even necessarily a dig at this game. It's, that's more of a broad topic. Um, but anyway, enough waffling. My time is up. Team, thanks again for joining me. I might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.